Welcome back to the channel tonight. I just wanted to do a little bit of a tabletop discussing the LT Wright Pronghorn. This one happens to be in uh, 01 steel and it's got the double red micarta handles. So it's a relatively small knife. Start off with the sheath. This is the sheath that it comes with. Make sure this focuses. Get a little closer. There you go. So this sheath is uh, what I would call a, a decent quality sheath, but not not really high. It's just decent, and I'm okay with that. Um, I really don't burn out sheaths too much. Actually, the part that gets burnt out the most is this right here, because I use it for stropping a lot, especially if it becomes more of a bushcrafty kind of knife. Eventually, I'll burn that out, and a lot of, a lot of times, I'll attach a D-ring through here, and this might wear out. Not too often do I have buttons come undone, but that is something that does happen from time to time on uh, some other brands that I've had, but not LT Wright knives, and I've got a few of them. I've got uh, a Genesis sitting here. It happens to be in uh, Thompson's leather knife sheath. And then here's another one that's in the original, just like this one here. This is another Genesis Scandi, and they're just not burning out on me. I like them. So the, the, the sheath is decent, but to tell you the truth, I've actually been carrying the knife in... This is a, a different sheath altogether for a different knife. This one was for a Brissa or Enzo, um, their little necker, I believe. That's what this was for. And I actually kind of feel like the finish on this sheath is superior. Uh, it doesn't have a lanyard, or it doesn't have a uh, fire steel loop, which really bothers me. I wish it did. But even the, the sealing on the end, I actually think they do a finer job on that. It seems like a hair thicker leather, and it's just a little darker. I actually prefer this one, so I've been carrying it in this. And this configuration is slightly smaller than the original sheath that it came with. I think this is more of a generic sheath that LT Wright has for a couple other knives, and it just happens to work for that. But this one, uh, if you can just tell by the, the mouth opening there, it's just a, a smaller sheath, and I wanted a more compact system anyways. And so uh, the, the knife that I've actually been carrying in the LT Wright sheath that fits pretty well is a Joker knife. And so this whole package right here is pretty small. This one is uh, another J. Sabater or Sabater. I don't know how to pronounce it. This one's called the Avispa, and I haven't done a video on this just yet, but the Avispa is a, a competitive option to the LT Wright knife. That I'm going to talk about today. There's the sheath situation going on right there. Pretty good. The Avispa comes with a horrible, horrible sheath. Decent knife. All right, now to the actual knife. So this is the LT Wright Pronghorn, and it's it's a, a relatively small knife. If I can just show you, if you can see the size of my hand right there, um, I find this to be almost a perfect, perfect size knife. Although it's not the biggest, broadest handle, and you guys know that I prefer, like I'll pull out this other Genesis here with liners, I prefer big, fat, and as broad as I can get them, basically, handles. And not many people are making handles like that. So if I'm doing like a, a fair amount of carving or a more bushcrafty kind of stuff, this obviously is, is not going to be replaced by this, but this does a pretty dang good job of it so far. I don't have a full review out, and I'll, I'll get a lot more use footage before I do that review. I just want to talk a little bit about what you could expect if you buy one of these. First of all, if you want to do a comparison with other LT Wright products, LT Wright has basically two kinds of red that I see. I see the double red, which is much much more of a dark, almost maroon color, and then this is just red linen micarta. So I'm going to come in a little closer here and try to give you a better picture if I can get it to focus. I'm not sure if this is focusing just right, but hopefully you can tell that this one is just a much lighter color, has almost a little bit of white in it, seems less polished on the red linen micarta here, and the double red is a much darker and much more polished look uh, overall. I kind of like it. It is closer to a maroon sometimes. If I just compare that against a blade that a lot of people have or have seen, here's a Mora Eldris, and that's a very red... You know, it's a deep red coloration, but just a little bit of a comparison between those two blades, you can get an idea of what that double red micarta is actually going to look like. And some people are probably curious. Here's just a comparison between the actual scales themselves. The Eldris is still fatter and broader in the handle, but it is shorter, and the blade itself is obviously shorter. The pronghorn is more stout of a stock material, 
And I just have to say the fit and finish of the, the pronghorn is obviously superior, and it should be. It's a big price difference between the two. I went with O1 mostly because uh, this is going to be a little carver for me, and I want to be able to get sp sparks off the spine. I do mess around a little bit with chaga or other natural materials, and uh, O1 sparks really, really well. It's super easy to sharpen up. In fact, I'm going to be doing some blade work here in a little while. When it's O1, I don't have to spend that much time. When it's a Scandian O1, because of that bevel situation, what's going on there with Scandi grind knives, it is super easy, super easy just to touch up, even with just ceramic at times, and I don't have to take a lot of material off. So uh, O1 was, was good enough for me. I have a lot of 3V blades. I have a lot of, you know, super steels, and I, I like those. But this one is a worker. It's, it's going to be for hard use, and I just don't anticipate um, trying to be nice or gentle with this one. It's going to be used, you know, pretty often, I think. Uh, just the size of it overall, uh, the fact that the stock thickness is not overly thick, it's still pretty slicey, and it's just really handy. If I can just show you a, a little hand comparison there, I have extra large size hands. I'm 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 225 pounds, somewhere around there. And so I, I do have pretty big mitts, and I can still get all my hands around this very comfortably. I find this blade to be almost the perfect in-between. You may not want a really big, bulky blade if you're only going with a blade that is about three inches. You know, just about, just about three inches. You may not want a really big, bulky handle. Uh, you want something a little smaller and just easier to carry around. And in the winter time, with uh, gloves especially, this is just about the perfect size. There's a little bit of contouring on the handle for indexing and grabbing it in different positions. And there's enough blade here, which uh, contrary to an Eldress, here's another Eldress. That's uh, It's called the Eldris Light. I haven't done a review of this, but the Eldris Light is also Scandi all the way up. And this one is a Scandi from the, the top to the bottom. It's a consistent grind. But that little extra blade length right there really makes a difference. Like if you're trying to do a, a chest lever or something and make a cut, and you don't have that much blade there, you really have to go back on the handle. Like that Eldris, I have to go back on the handle quite a bit. And it effectively becomes a three-finger grip. Just because I'm trying to utilize as much as I can of that blade before it slips out of the wood or whatever I'm doing. And with this one, with that little bit extra, I can grab it like normal and I can still get really, really big cuts out of it when I'm carving and whittling, which is something I do a lot of. If you guys didn't know that, go check out some of my spoon carving videos uh, from the past. I do a lot of spoon carving in my free time. And this is something I would like to see in that task. But uh, hiking, backpacking... This is something I definitely would take with me. The weight isn't that bad. Um, I've got a caliper here. I don't have a scale. I have to go with LT's numbers on that. But as far as the spine goes, it does come out, if I go at the very top here, it does come out to be uh, 0.122. So those of you who are snobs about that kind of thing, when I measure it in multiple locations, it's consistent, 0.122. And then the scales themselves, this is a part that a lot of people care about, and I actually I care about a lot. I wanted to know, I couldn't find much online. As far as the scale's broadness goes, I'm gonna go from the first finger position. It's 0 0.84 from the first finger position. So right there, 0 0.84, that's actually reasonable. And then uh, in the middle, right there about 0 0.86. So that's decent. It is more of a Puko style, you know, this is really LT's take on a Puko. And then again on the thickness here of the scales, towards that first finger position, not quite in the um, scallops, 0 0.67, okay? And then in the middle, 0 0.83, which is really not bad. It's a very rounded handle. For those of you who are wondering, like, are there any hot spots or anything like that? Really, for a small handle that is not as big as, you know, a full-size bushcraft knife with lots of feature to it, and, uh, you know, there's just a huge amount of real estate to get my big hands around this thing, lots of control. The comfort that I have with that knife and this knife is actually really not that different. This one really f fills the hand, and I think it's just that broomstick style handle. It does a really good job. I'm very happy with it. If I was to compare this against something else, maybe something else that a lot of you have, here is a cold steel. This is the uh, Mini Pendleton Hunter. I can't remember which model they call it. Oh, it's probably right on there. The Pendleton Mini Hunter. How about that? So here's a little comparison. The Mini Pendleton Hunter blade, like cutting surface, is very similar. Handles very similar in length, just a tad bit longer on this one. Um, 
But if you look at those handle scales, if you can see that there, the Mini Pendleton is is pretty, you know, it's anemic. It's hard to get your hand on, but it's a hunting knife. It's, it's almost exclusively a hunting knife for a lot of people. The sheath is not preferable, but uh, this knife, when I'm holding on it or I'm trying to get cuts on it, it's pretty small, even though it's got this uh, rubbery texture. I can't remember what they're calling that. It's not Grivex, uh, but it's like a rubbery version of that. Yeah, it's really grippy, but it's hard for me to get a hand on it because my hands are just too big. A small-handed person, easily, that's not a problem for them with that blade. This one, though, this is right in my wheelhouse, and it has more of the grind that I'm looking for. I like Scandi grinds or Sabre grinds. Um, I pretty much prefer them over a flat grind most of the time. And so this blade seems to hit a lot of boxes for me. Um, as far as the handle length, I think those specs that you're going to find online are true. So you can always check those out. But here's mine from the top to the bottom. I'm getting 3.7 inches. And for the actual blade, if I can accurately measure this here, let's go like this and up. Right right about there so this one from the blade I'm getting 2.8 so again right here where the blade starts let's just make sure it touches 2.80 is what I'm getting for a measurement there so I'm not much of a snob for those measurements I was just looking for something with right around a three inch blade and a slightly longer handle so I could get my whole hand on there and I just didn't want it to be anemic I didn't want it to be super skinny I wanted a little bit more broadness there, and I really like the double red micarta handles. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on this blade, something you'll be seeing on the channel. If you have questions with it, go ahead and ask those questions. Otherwise, I'm going to say these were in stock the last time I checked at the Knife Center. No, not the Knife Center. The Knife Connection. That's where I found this one, the Knife Connection. So go check out that website. It's really hard to get a hold of LT stuff right now. You're probably going to have to hunt to get this stuff like every probably every single day and you'll get lucky if you find it because it's selling out in a matter of an hour when it's in stock on a lot of websites so anyways guys just trying to give you a tip on how you can find something like this it's a really high quality knife you probably shouldn't pay any more than 110 dollars for something like this remember it's an 01 even if it's a custom or semi-custom blade it's 01 so that would be the the top of the the market for me otherwise i'd start looking at 3v blades and uh, get some you know more superior steel for what you're going to pay for and this one uh yeah i'm real happy with it fit and finish is great i'd pay up to 110 dollars for it thanks guys